This is a video outlining my best advice to getting good at Warzone. I'll tell you what, let's just get straight in there. Straight off the bat, have the right settings. I suggest changing your audio mix to boost high or boost low. Boost low I personally have because it helps you hear footsteps much, much easier, making it much harder for people to sneak up on you. The other setting I suggest changing is your button layout. So this is a suggestion mainly for people with a standard controller, and that's to change it to stick and move. This makes it much easier to jump shot people. So essentially, um, it changes your right analog stick to the button that uh, climbs things or jumps. So this means you can do that without taking your thumbs off the, off the sticks, essentially. Now on to the second piece of advice I have for you getting much better at Warzone, is to coordinate your loadouts when you play in squads. We know heartbeat sensors are a must-have in the game, but do we all need them? Maybe just one or two of your team who do an active job with it is enough. This allows your other teammates to run different tacticals, such as stuns or smokes, to diversify your in-game approach to gunfights. In terms of weapons, we all know someone who loves a snipe, and there absolutely should be one set up in your team. But again, not everyone needs one. There's absolutely a place for one or two players with an RPG as a secondary to clear out camping players in buildings or protect you versus vehicles. And apart from that, pretty much it's ARs all round because most engagements are going to be at a distance and they're generally the best weapons on the game anyway. M4 and Growl, hello, hello! In terms of perks, it's pretty much up to individuals, but Cold-Blooded and EOD for the first perk, Ghost for the second perk, and Amped for the third perk are what I suggest, as I personally think they're the most powerful things you can run on Warzone. For those wanting an AR and a Sniper, or an AR and an SMG, I would advise taking Overkill, but only if you buy a loadout yourselves before the first loadout drops in the game. Then wait until that first one drops, and then equip a ghost class and pick your weapons back up. Uh, in terms of the, the latter end loadout drop in Circle 5, that's just way too dangerous uh, to use really, unless you're desperate. Um, that's even if you make it to that stage without having ghost on. If possible, even coordinate field upgrades in-game. Maybe one of you runs a trophy to throw in a car to stop RPGs and C4s later in the game. Maybe someone has a deployable cover to get you out of a tricky situation in No Man's Land. By diversifying your team's arsenal, you can react to different situations and ultimately increase your chances of staying in the game and winning it significantly. On the subject of loadouts, I suggest using the weapons that suit you the most. Personally, I think the Growl is the easiest weapon on the game to use. It's insanely accurate, with little to no recoil. You can hold down the trigger at an enemy at distance and still be incredibly accurate. Of course, the correct attachments are important, so here's a quick rundown of what I use. Monolithic Suppressor, Tempest Arc Angel, Commando Foregrip with a 60 round mag, and the Cronin Sniper Elite. This allows for a very steady weapon with decent aim down sight speed too. Now on to my fourth suggestion. Become comfortable with the map. Now this obviously comes with just playing more, but you can make a conscious effort to explore key areas. For example, landing semi-centrally most games and understanding the areas for vantage points, where chests usually are, where the shop usually is, and where people like to go, and even where the loadout drops are in that area, can all give you an advantage over your opponents. This has been particularly relevant for myself at the dam and end game, but hopefully that nightmare part of the map will be changed within the next week with season 4 coming. On to number 5! Choose your moment to engage. This is arguably one of the most important tips I'll share with you today. If you see a player or a squad, and you can't comfortably kill them more than 5 times out of 10, wait for your chance. Move closer, or higher, or communicate with your teammates to collaborate on the kill. It's also important to choose your moment in relation to game management. Say the storm is coming in and you're not in the circle, you start making your way to the circle and you see a player or a team just ahead of you. Don't shoot, that's trapping you in between them and the storm. Your best bet is pushing up enough that you can get to cover and away from the storm. 
The end game is also a very important time to choose your engagements relative to your match position. If you're lucky enough to be within the final circles with a vantage point, say the top of the only building in the area with your full team still up, then by all means dictate the game and bully players if you want to. But most of the time this isn't going to happen. You need to have trigger discipline and let other teams and players take each other out and give their positions away. Because chances are, if you start popping at people, the rest of the map, that's by the way usually quite eerily quiet at this point, will turn to the only source of noise. Of course, sometimes you don't always have a say in shooting at an enemy. They might spot you or something, which is why me and my friends always use the call out, don't shoot if you don't have to, whilst we move into better positions, say if we're uh, rotating um, an area that's open, something like that. This isn't to say, just be passive until you no longer can be. It's about playing smarter and increasing your chances of winning gunfights and ultimately the game. When you have a definitive advantage over other players, take it. For example, if you see a gunfight happening between other squads, assess the situation and hop on the back of it. They'll be engaged already, potentially weak and low on resources. Take them out now before one side wins and they recuperate. So on to number six. This is kind of on the same vibe as the last suggestion of choosing your moment, but I thought I'd emphasize this one as it's a common mistake. Try to avoid challenging players that are set up in buildings with limited entrances. If you have to, do it with RPGs, C4s, and try not to just walk into their line of sight. People can often get a little bit fixated with going for the kill when you know where the enemy is, but unless you can gain an advantage, simply don't bother. Now whilst I've got you here, I have actually got another video looking at 5 alternative tips that can increase your chances of winning on Warzone that you probably haven't heard of or even considered before, and I'll post that in the card here and in the description for anyone that wants to watch that. Now on to the seventh tip to get better at Warzone. When in gunfights with squads, focus on the people that are currently up and shooting at you. Okay, that seems stupid and obvious, right? But how many times have you or your teammates took bullets and actually sometimes died from committing to the kill on someone that's already down? Sure, finish them off if the coast is clear and it's safe to do so, but don't risk health for it. Okay, they might have self-revive on, depending on the timing of the game you're in, but often there's a more pressing matter, you know, the guy running around with a gun in his hand? Even if the downed player does self-revive, you may have already taken out his teammate by that time he's back up, or he's self-revived and he's so weak still you can just one-shot him back down, not a problem. Okay, on to the next suggestion. Only loot when you have to. Obvious, right? But how often do you have your loadout, full ammo, full armour, Maybe even already got a kill streak, and you know you've just killed someone, but you run over to their body immediately to collect the loot like a magpie. Don't even risk running blindly out to loot. You've just been in a gunfight and alerted the map. If you don't need the loot immediately, then just relax for a second and assess the area. Only takes a moment, but can save you a trip back to the lobby. Okay, now here's just a quick hint that I really need to just get off my chest. Please stop re-peeking and challenging from the same angle when an enemy has just shot you. Slow re-challenging a sniper or something is just suicide. Keep people guessing, move from angle to angle, or even just dip if you have to. So that actually brings us to number 10. When you're running across a field or somewhere open, have a plan for if you get shot. Now say you're crossing the ravine next to downtown and a couple of guys open fire on your squad. Well before you even start running across, you should think and sometimes even communicate that if you do get shot, um, what, what should you do? Should you shoot back and outgun them, or should you actually run for cover? So this means that when you do get shot, or if you do get shot, you don't just panic and scatter whilst you know some people are running away, some people are trying to shoot back, it's uncoordinated, and you end up just dying. Number 11 is actually just a tiny tip. If you need to outrun the storm quick, and you're holding onto a cluster, whip that out. That's basically the same as running with a knife in your hand. So on to number 12, and that's running a recon drone in endgame. Now this is getting more popular, and for a good reason. You pop a UAV in that endgame, and most people are going to have ghost on, leaving you vulnerable. A recon drone just uses your beautiful little eyes to spot people. This is best within teams of course, since they can protect you while you fly a drone around and you can communicate back to them where people are. 
Now on to the 13th suggestion for people who want to get better at Warzone, which admittedly is unlucky for some. And that's simply to play the end game early. Now what I mean by this is you'll get a good idea of where roughly the end game is going to be a few circles in. Especially if you've done recon contracts, which I actually highly advise you to do. With this information under your belt, use it. Get to the best areas early. Circles that are going to be over the edge of the map are ideal on occasions because around that area you know you can't get shot from behind. Or if there's high ground in the end game area where people will have to run at you, you want to head for that area early. Scampering away from the edge of the storm isn't always the best idea as you can be left vulnerable. Potentially crossing vast areas with enemies anticipating people running from it and waiting for you. Okay, so they were all my suggestions on how to get good at Warzone. I'm sure they'll be of some use to you and increase the chances of you winning. Do you have any suggestions for others on how to get good at Warzone? If so, pop them in the comments and we'll discuss. Now if you did like the video, maybe like the video. And while you're there, maybe subscribe. It helps me out a lot and I'd be very grateful. Stay safe and farewell!